So if you work at a company that's doing a lot of Google AdWord campaigns, you're probably wondering how to increase your, your uh, conversion. I used to work at NEC doing exactly that, and I'd, I'd play a, a lot with key keywords and call to actions and try to come up with better wording that would get more people to click on that ad and then more people to buy. Well, here we're going to talk to a company, Boost CTR, which is going to show us how to do that with a system and so you don't have to waste every morning trying to scratch your head and come up with a better way to word your ads. Who are you? Hi. Uh, well, just really happy to be here, Robert. And uh, I'm David Greenbaum. I'm the CEO of Boost CTR. Uh, and uh, a little background on myself, uh, Boost CTR is a company that I founded with, uh, with my partner about three and a half years ago in Miami. Um, actually, it's kind of one of those cool opportunities where we were actually working at a travel company um, and we bought um, this other large uh, hotel chain for over $110 million acquisition. Wow. And uh, their AdWords performance was, was pretty bad. And so uh, the impetus for Boost CTR was actually this uh, this uh, process that we put in place at the at the company to improve their ad, ad copy and uh, essentially when we bought this company we we saw their ad copy was tr uh, underperforming tremendously and so my partner Rob had this idea for put, uh, basically putting together this competition where everyone in our group from the secretary on up to the VP in the group uh, would basically there's like going to be this this challenge and this competition where we would look to each write better ad copy uh, for for the uh, for the company that we just acquired, uh, and the cool thing is you know everyone had a wonderful time doing it, it was really fun, um, and we saw after a couple of weeks that the performance of the ads we had writ written uh, was actually substantially better than their original ad copy, and That's so that brilliant. was really that was it's nice when you have an opportunity to start a company with a real you know real life uh, challenge and, and sort of implementation. Uh, you know that, that you have experience with beforehand. No, that's really really uh, awesome. So you work with big companies. You know, I I I, I don't even know if you're working with uh, Zappos, but when I toured there, they have a whole group that does nothing but ads, right? And that's their secret sauce. That that was the one group that really didn't tell you anything about what they did on their little tour. You know, everybody else was very happy to tell you exactly how they bought shoes or how they bought you know clothes stuff like that or what the numbers were. But that group was like, nah, we're not going to tell yes. you quite how we do the secret sauce and making these ads convert better. Oh, definitely. Is that, is that the kind of company you're looking to work with? Definitely. That's really our core sort of uh, sweet spot. And it's funny that you mentioned Zappos. We're actually just about to kick off a uh, pilot with them, uh, you know, fingers crossed. But yeah, our typical clients spend north of $100,000 a month. So these are pretty, you know, some of the larger yeah. SEM spenders. And so basically, Boost CTR is a service that is focused and dedicated on one thing, which is improving PPC ad copy uh, for, for large uh, advertisers and agencies. Those are the ads on the right side of Google, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, on the right and the top PPC of the page. PPC stands for paid per click? Yes, sir. Right, so every time I click on one of those ads, Google gets some money and the advertiser has to pay and hopefully that converts later on, right? Yeah, the $30 billion that was uh, spent on the, on, the, on the search industry last year was made just in that exact fashion. Uh, and so we're, you know, and sort of just as big picture context, when you think about the world of paid search, uh, there, you know, you have that $30 billion, there are really three key levers that you have for optimizing that spend. The first are your keywords, the second are your bids, and the third are your ads. And um, the, there are dozens, if not hundreds, of companies that are devoted to helping you to, to scale up and to optimize your keywords and your bids. Uh, companies like Marin and Kenshu, for example, with over billion dollars of collective enterprise value. But when it comes to ad copy, um, it, it requires a different approach. You need to get humans involved. Yeah. Uh, because that's actually what, you know, humans are the, the ones who are typing in their search queries. Uh, and you need to have ad copy that actually speaks to them and that communicates that they can find what they're looking for. How, I mean, how important is the ad copy? Does it decide where on that page that ad gets placed? And, and or does, does it do anything other than get people to click on the ads? Yeah, words? so uh, ad copy is tremendously important in terms of getting uh, value from your paid search campaigns. Um, better ad copy has a, will, will, will drive a number of factors for you, will drive a number of improvements. So to the extent that you have better ad copy, your conversion rate and your conversions per thousand impressions will go up. 
uh, and, and you can uh, write ad copy that has a variety of different sort of approaches or, or um, things that it's looking to accomplish, you may be interested in finding people who are highly likely to convert, and you can write ad copy that's going to be very uh, specific about your, 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 your product offering, and that may even weed out certain types of non- uh, sort of give me an uh, give me an example of that if I'm buying a mountain bike or if you're trying to put copy on a mountain bike search you know trek mountain bike or mountain bike or let's say you sell a high end type of mountain bike and you and you pay every time somebody clicks on your ad uh, and so you may want to you know you want to filter for people who have a high propensity to buy your high end mountain bike one thing you might do is put the price in for example, you want to make sure you know that people, for example, understand that this is going to be a bike that is going to cost a lot of money. Uh, you may put something. You might not want to put the exact price in, but you may sort of say, you know, sort of purveyors of high quality or you know, top of the line mountain bikes. If people are looking for a discount mountain bike, that may discourage them from clicking on that ad, and and ultimately actually drive up your uh, conversion rate uh, on the back end. So that's one area where uh, ad copy can certainly have an impact. Um, obviously, ad copy can also impact, impact your click-through rate, the propensity of somebody seeing that ad to click on it and visit your website. Um, the other thing is Google actually rewards you as your ad copy improves and as people uh, click on it more frequently, Google will actually give you a reduction in your cost per click. So uh, because you're, you're helping them to sell more clicks is why they're willing to do that. Yep. And they're just using basic uh, sort of economic theory to incent you to write better ads. Um, so we find that it's a tremendous fulcrum point within accounts. And so it's interesting. I think one of the interesting pieces is, you know, you, you bring up, um, you know, companies like Zappos, for example. And whether you're spending, one thing that we see um, is whether you're spending, let's say, $5,000 a month to $500,000 a month on AdWords, the number of people that you have on your team is relatively fixed. Yeah. So you're going to have between most likely three to seven people who are managing that, that spend. Uh, and so that's really not, and these people tend to be primarily analytical people. Yeah. Uh, you have to be good with you know, the math, you have to be somewhat technical. Um, and so uh, that, that brings up a number of challenges as it relates to ad copy. So the first issue is um, uh, you may be selling uh, you know, uh, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of SKUs and products. You know, how, does one, you know, how does one of these three to seven people on the team write a specific piece of ad copy for each of those SKUs, each of those products. Yeah. Uh, very challenging, and it's not really humanly possible. So while the, the, the keywords and the bids scale up very efficiently and nicely for this team of three to seven using the power of software, the ad copy doesn't. Uh, and so you're left with very generic ad copy in many cases. So how do we hire you to do better, and what does it cost, and then uh, what do you do? You yeah, know, if, sure. I, if I have that $100,000 spend and I'm working at a consumer products company or a retailer or something like that, what do you actually do for me with you know, these hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of keywords that I'm tracking? Totally. So the first piece is, the way I, I would describe Boost CTR is almost like a cyborg approach. So on the one hand, we, there are two pieces to what we do. The first piece is we have a network of over, of over 500 expert copywriters. Uh, and these are people who we've um, hand, hand picked and selected, and it's actually very, uh, a very rigorous process to get into our network of, of, uh, uh, of copywriters. Yeah. Uh, that's the first piece of the solution. The second piece is we have software uh, that coordinates their efforts. And the software does three things. The first thing it does is it looks for the biggest opportunities for bang for buck within the account. Whereas if, I'm gonna, if you're gonna be writing today, which part, which ad groups within the account should you be writing for? The second thing it does is it creates this sort of uh, competitive split testing environment. And what we do is we take an advertiser's best existing ad copy, and that forms a baseline uh, that, that our writers need to improve on. Our writers submit their ad copy, and we split test it automatically on a variety of success metrics. Uh, 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 conversions per impression, uh, conversion rate, uh, click-through rate, uh, depending on what the, 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 the uh, strategic objective of the advertiser is. Yep. And the third piece is that it um, uh, reports back on the value that we're driving and, and sort of rich graphical reporting. Uh, and so that's how we drive this value for our customers. Um, we have over 200 customers today. Uh, some of our customers include Kayak, uh, Cafe Press, Mandarin Oriental Hotels, Kaplan, uh, a lot of large advertisers that, that you've heard of. Um, and then, uh, so that's kind of the value that we're driving. Yeah. In terms of how we price, we price on a percentage of spend basis. Uh, and so we're charging um, between one to 2% of spend until you get over a million dollars a month. And the way that I think that I, I, I like to justify that is on average, we've been improving conversions per impression by 15% for our customers while driving down their cost per acquisition by about 3%. 
So on that wow. basis alone, on the driving down the cost per acquisition basis, that equals out the one to two percent that we charge our customers, uh, and then they, they get the benefit of that increased uh, you know conversions per impression on top of that. That's amazing. It is, and I think. I think, uh, and that was kind of the initial reaction that we had when we were doing this at, at you know, b back in the day. But I think it's- So the, in other words, there's a lot of people out there who are leaving money on the table by not taking an approach that you're doing. I, I, that's definitely what we're seeing because you need to have human involvement in it. But there, this scale, the people who are managing these campaigns that have over, you know, spending over 100,000 a month, it's just a, a, an issue of scope. Like where do yeah. you start writing, you know, where do you start writing? And you know that it's not humanly possible. And so what you do is you end up with very generic ad copy. Um, and so what our process does, I think, and the reason why we're able to drive value is we're taking a network of motivated people who are only, who are paid on performance, i.e. when they write better ad copy. And they're, it's really, they bring a diversity of perspectives. That's like one of the other nice pieces, rather than having the same person think about the same particular ad group and the same sort of call to action and bringing their own, sort of their own life's yeah. perspectives to that, you can get a multitude of people, many of whom would be actual customers of this product, uh, and 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 really writing, you know, writing uh, as customers, you know, how they want to be communicated to. What kinds of mistakes are you seeing companies make when they before they hire you, and and what, and you start going into their system and seeing what they wrote and what your guys write, and then the differences. What, what are you noticing? Some common tips, I guess. Definitely, I think one of the most important things, and especially with a large company like Rackspace, for example. Um, you have to set the table before you, you know, and before you um, you know you can sit down and actually write ad, uh, ad copy. What do you mean by and, that? And so by that I mean you have to make sure that you have good segmentation of your ad groups. That's always step one. So you have to have tightly focused um, uh, keyword sets within your ad groups because the idea there is you want your keywords to have a common set of intent behind them. And to the extent that you have keywords that have multiple different intents behind them, it can be very challenging to write good ad copy for them because depending on which, which of those keywords are getting volume in a particular day, people are actually looking for different things within that particular ad group. Yeah. So the first thing is a structural thing. You wanna make sure that your account is structured pretty tightly from an ad group perspective. Uh, the next biggest mistake I would say um, that we see is generic ad copy. And it's people- What do you mean by that? You know, when can you recognize that you have generic ad copy? Well, you know that you have it because you use basically a template to create it. Um, and it's going to be, you know, buy, um, you know, our fantastic, you know, mugs, you know, from this store, we have over X thousand in stock, for example. And you're, you're sort of talking about the store, you're talking about a little bit around like kind of your stock, but it's the same exact thing for mugs, for, you know, for uh, candles, for, you know, placemats, what, you know, for a home furnishing store, for example, let's say. And it's not actually talking about the specific product. Um, you know, in, in any kind of uh, specific way. The issue is your ad is showing up against other people's, you know, ads and they, they you know, the person has typed the exact same thing, you know, and, and they're, they're seeing a set of ads. What's gonna differentiate your ad versus the others? So to the extent that you can write an ad that is specifically related to that particular ad group and those particular keywords uh, in a unique way, there's huge value in that. Interesting. Um, and so just specificity alone, I think, is, is a major, um, uh, is, is a really important thing. Um, another of a really important thing is uh, to whatever extent you can bring up risk mitigation. Um, if there's, uh, if you have free shipping or if you know you have a money back guarantee, that sort of thing, ah. bringing those into the ad copy is always effective. So you have to understand what gets your customers not to complete the sale. And if they get halfway through and they see, oh, I have to pay for shipping and they leave, you should know that and you should mitigate that up front. <clears throat> yes, definitely. I mean, I think to okay. the extent that you have, you know, it's, and especially if it's a unique, a feature of, of your store relative to another uh, store, for example. Got it. There's the tried and true, you know, you always want to make sure the keywords are appearing, you know, in your ad copy is another thing. <clears throat> uh, we find that actually bringing up specific quantities or numbers can be important. So if you have, let's say, let's say you have 5,347 varieties of shoes, you know, in stock for a particular brand, if you're Zappos, for example, mention that specific number. Don't say over 5,000 say 5,347, for example. Um, so that's like kind of another interesting approach to it. Um, I think, uh, you know, bringing up price can be effective in certain circumstances. Calls to action, um, incredibly important. Yeah. So there are a variety of kind of but I, when I, I used to work in a camera store and I used to do the ads in, in the newspaper and we always had a rule. It had to have a call to action. Buy now, come in now, you know. Um, 
uh, get your film process now, something like that, you know, a, a call to action, come in the store and do something with us, you know. Definitely. And you'd be amazed, you know, in many cases, we, you know, we see that it's that there, uh, you know, that, that there's an absence of a call to action in not a few scenarios, actually, you know, yeah. it's actually more prevalent than you would expect it would be. Um, so that's ah, definitely something. Some good tips. Yeah. Um, what's your business been like and how is it funded? Was it just funded out of this uh, hotel cha chain that you bought or uh, tell me a little bit about yeah, it. Yeah. So it turns out that starting a business in Miami is a, a little challenging. And so we were trying to bootstrap it. You mean you don't have Ron Conway coming down the street <laughs> where you can pitch him and say, hey, man, I got a cool startup. <laughs> it was incredibly just making, you know, getting it's it's there's um. Uh, just getting that initial, you know, meeting and conversation with a Ron Conway, for example, incredibly challenging. So I actually had to move the business to first New York and then ultimately San Francisco to get funded. Um, we uh, have a combination of both venture capital firms as well as uh, angel investors. Our lead uh, VCs are Javelin Venture Partners and Metamorphic Ventures uh, and have a number of phenomenal, uh, well-known, um, you know, Valley investors as well. Um, and uh, yeah, we actually raised our first round of financing a little over a, a year ago now. Um, have over 200 customers um, working with, we just announced a partnership with Marin Software. Uh, they, you know, major uh, bid management platform managed three and a half billion dollars of uh, AdWords spend. Wow. And they're now recommending us to their customer base, um, kicking off with large agencies like iProspect. Um, and so, uh, yeah, basically, you know, what I, I feel like what we're doing is um, bringing a human element to this, you know, to this incredibly important aspect of, uh, of optimization within search engine marketing. Very cool. Well, thanks for coming in and, and talking to me about it. It sounds like something that uh, a lot of the big businesses need to make their ads work better. So uh, definitely. Where do we learn more about it? Uh, Boost CTR, uh, uh, just like that. Uh, CTR cool. for click-through rate. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Robert. Mm -hmm.